Broadcast Pioneers member John DeBella is one of the most durable, recognizable, and popular air personalities in Philadelphia radio. He is currently heard during Morning Drive on WMGK. Born in Queens, John worked at WLIR in Garden City, Long Island, where he developed the Dare to be Different new wave format for his show, The DeBella Travesty. While at WLIR, John became good friends with rock singer Joni Jett and received a gold record for promoting her I Love Rock and Roll. John brought his new wave format to Philadelphia in the 1980s, where he and former WLAR air personality Mark the Shark Drucker served as masterminds behind WMMR's The Morning Zoo, Philadelphia's number one rated morning show for most of the decade. Every year, John would host DeBella De Ball, which was held on December 7th with a nod to FDR's Day of Infamy speech, and which was very popular with rock music fans. Throughout the mid-'80s, John did on-air promos and wraparounds for the morning and afternoon cartoon blocks on WTAF Channel 29. In 2002, along with sidekick Jen Posner and producer Rob Calvert, John DeBella began a morning talk show on WMGK punctuated with classic rock songs, including Breakfast with the Beatles, and weekly guest appearances by comedian Grover Silcox. John closes each show with, Have a great day, Philadelphia, and don't take crap from anybody. The Broadcast Pioneers of Philadelphia, proud to induct John DeBella into the Broadcast Pioneers Hall of Fame. Get there. (laughs) And I'm going to go a little off book. Um, (laughs) Thank you, Jerry. I also want to thank Jerry for being his height, making everybody look so incredibly tall. <laughs> and, uh, and, and to my friends at Channel 6, uh, Jim, David, <laughs> those aren't mustaches. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I really didn't plan on, on going off script all that much this evening because uh, I, I've got to tell you, there's something odd about receiving this award. Uh, first, first off, let me tell you, I don't think everybody has explained this yet, and I'm not sure if this is how it went down for everybody, but Bill was telling you about the letter that we all got. I'm not sure if this happened to you, Bill, if it happened to anybody else, but before I got the letter, I got the phone call from Jerry. Now, I'm standing in an Acme supermarket, my phone rings, and this happened. I did! Yeah, what the hell is this? There's got to be a wrong number. Listen now, we got this award, this podcast pioneers award. We want to know if you want to have it. But sometimes we, sometimes what we do is we, well, we'll offer to some people. They don't want to take it. They don't want to have it. So before we tape it to you, we want to make sure that you want to come down. You want to get it. Because I'm going, Jerry. <laughs> so eventually, I said yes, and I got the letter, and then I was like really honored because obviously it wasn't a you know prank phone call. Uh, I, I got to say though, this is. Uh, this is the third award I've gotten. I've gotten a Lifetime Achievement Award. I now have a Hall of Fame Award. Uh, I've gotten an honorarium. And uh, I had an award named after me. Uh, so, okay, I get it. I'm old. I will get out of your way as soon as I possibly can. <laughs> uh, uh, although, uh, this one really, uh, I really do appreciate this one because this one means a lot to me because it's here in Philadelphia. Um, uh, you know, they, they say to you, if you... If you do what you love, you will never work a day in your life. What they leave out of that is where you do what you love. Because, sorry, Blaze, but I worked in Pittsburgh where the sky is brown and yellow and the plants are as smart as the people. (laughs) It's not the edge of the universe, but you can see it from there. (laughs) And, and, uh, And after seven months, I was willing to walk back to New York if anybody would offer me a job. Uh, I, I got to drive, but uh, two years later, I got to come down here, and, and I got to tell you something. Uh, when I got down here, I was listening to radio, and I've heard radio all over the country, uh, and, and in big cities and in smaller markets, and, 
And, and I knew in 1982 that I could take the worst radio station in Philadelphia and put it up against the best radio stations in other markets, and it would blow them out of the water. This marketplace is one of the most innovative radio marketplaces, no matter how big or how small the radio station is. This is a great radio market, and I am proud to be working here in it. I got to... When I got down here, I, I, I came down here, I was uh, put on the air uh, at MMR and, uh, and a show that was just really tanking. I didn't even think I could fix it. I, I was curious, I was surprised I even got the job. What made them think I could fix it? They actually had a, a, a revolving door of morning people. You never knew in 1981, 82, when you turned on MMR in the morning, who the morning person was going to be. One week it would be this guy, one day it would be a different guy. I came in and I think I only started to win because I showed up every day for six months. So uh, eventually I brought down uh, the late Mark the Shark who uh, was also, I'm, I, I don't think I'm giving away a big secret here, but if you remember the morning zoo, we had a sportscaster as well, Jack Strap, Philadelphia's athletic supporter. And Mark was that guy. And he just put on some weird voice, kind of sounded like Jerry. And, and people never knew. People always thought there was a third person in to the point that when we took press shots, we used to get John Thomas, who was the business manager of the station, to dress up in like sports gear and make like he was Jack Strap. He was in the TV commercials as Jack Strap. Eventually, uh, th those, that gang became uh, myself and Mark and Pat Godwin, Steve Lushbaugh, Grover Silcox. Uh, I, I mean, just this incredible gang of people. And the show just exploded. And people, I, I was, I was uh, at a luncheon here, and uh, both Sue Serio and Blaze Howard said some of the nicest things I've ever heard about myself. And I was wondering what they got this from, because I didn't know that guy. And, uh, and, and people on the outside always thought that we were these, like, oh, these guys are incredible. These guys are doing this radio. So it's, it's, just, it's magnificent. You've got to hear this stuff. On the inside, it was like Das Boat. It was like we were the 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 you know the mines were coming down and we're sitting there with the wind wedges trying to keep the damn thing from sinking. Uh, it was an amazing time. All right, the fact that we had numbers the likes of which the market had never seen. But the the wild thing about it was was that it was just all fun. We never realized. We had no idea how popular we were. We really didn't. I know that sounds very naive, but we didn't. We began to realize it when, like uh, Tom mentioned, the Debella de Ball. When we had the third Debella de Ball, someone counterfeited the tickets. We had a room that could fit 800 people, and 3,000 showed up. All right? And you had to pay for drinks. It wasn't like you got them for free. We did a broadcast at the Bourse, uh, and uh, we showed up outside, and the cops were ticked at us because over 1,000 people were standing outside waiting to come in and see this show. We were just five wacky guys doing this silly little radio program and you know, having a real enjoyable time doing it. I am still having an enjoyable time doing it. I, I, I have to tell you, I have, I have retired twice. I have been buried once. <laughs> and and, and uh, I only know one other guy who managed to live through that, so I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I, I have to tell you that I am uh, really, really fortunate uh, not only to be working in this market, but to still be working in this market, to be working for a company like Greater Media, which, uh, you know, and, and I know a lot of you will, will understand this. Thomas Jefferson said about democracy that democracy is a very bad form of government, but all the rest are much worse. It's kind of like what radio is. I mean, you know, Greater Media is, you know, it, it could be worse than this, but thank God it's not. It is, it is really... <laughs> It really is, of all of the companies I've worked for, and believe me, I worked for a lot. When I was at MMR, I worked for five different companies. In, in 11 years, five different owners. It doesn't get better than Greater Media. I, I work with a, an air staff that uh, uh, is, is the most experienced air staff in Philadelphia, hands down. I mean, our, Ray Koob, our nighttime guy, who has the least experience at the station, has been there for, has been on the air for 20 years. And he started as my intern, all right? So I have a staff on my show that, that pushes me on a daily basis, 
makes me be the best me I could possibly be, and I can't thank them enough for it. My, my radio wife, Jen Posner, uh, you know, one of my producers, you know, Dave Gibson, Turtle, of course, Joe Jonas, uh, and, uh, and Rob Calvert, who couldn't make it here tonight because he has some family business to take care of. But I'm, I'm lucky. I've been surrounded by great people my entire career. Most of all, uh, the best gift I have gotten in the course of the past year is our new program director, Bill Weston. Bill is probably, hands down, the greatest program director I have ever worked for. You go through a period in time where you question yourself, should I still be doing this? Oh, stop it. I ran short on every other damn one. All right? I, got, I got a cameraman doing this to me. No, thank you, buddy. All right? but, uh, but Bill is... Bill is, Bill's a gift from the gods, and Bill, I can't thank you enough for, for coming to MGK. I know what you took on, and, and I thank you for being there. You, sir, have given me new inspiration, so you are stuck with me for a real long time. <laughs> Lastly, and I promise you this is the last of it, I, um, I, I, I have learned a lot in radio. I, I've had a lot of fun doing radio, but the thing that I know most of all is if I can give anybody advice, if you're going to be in this business, right, the first thing I will tell you is know your audience. Right? Know what they expect of you and give it to them. Give them everything they expect from you and obviously be yourself. Secondly, don't try to tell them something is cool when it's not. They see right through that. Right? And most importantly, and there are those of you in the audience who will understand who I'm talking to right now, and so many people from my own sales staff are going, I can't believe he's going to say this to everybody. All right? Whether you're in radio or TV, all right? this industry uses the word client incorrectly. The client is the audience. The audience are the people who the sponsors want to get to. Remember who your client is. Serve your client and your sponsors will always be there. Thank you very much.